Hi, this is Skylar Lestad from GameExplained.com, and this is a video review of Alan Wake for the Xbox 360. Warning, this review contains a lot of game footage. Alan Wake is about a writer taking a vacation in Washington State's Olympic Peninsula in an effort to relax. When his wife mysteriously falls into the lake and he dives in after her only to wake up behind the wheel of a crashed car, he finds that his vacation will be anything but. The game opens with Alan in a dream, running from the unwitting soldiers of the darkness, the Taken. Here, the player learns the basic controls of the game, using light to break the defenses of the Taken, and using a weapon to kill them. With this and the dodge, the player has now learned the entirety of the gameplay, and in a chapter or two, all the variations it can muster. You do enter some interesting situations and survival missions where you have to hold off the assault of Taken throughout the course of the game. The problem is, these aren't common, and in all situations, it's easy to put your back to a wall, create a little stronghold for yourself, and hold fast. The combat would also be a bit more interesting if there were more than three enemy types that come at you, or if they were mixed and matched to some sort of strategic effect, which just isn't the case. You'll find yourself carefully managing your batteries as your flashlight runs down and your bullets as you switch guns. It's a neat system, but it lacks a critical layer of depth, and most of the gameplay comes down to the same thing, which makes battles repetitive and, at times, tedious. The big draw is all about the psychological thriller angle, trying to create a sense of fear through atmosphere rather than cheap thrills. And the game does do this through pseudo-Twilight Zone episodes, creepy writing that only your flashlight can reveal, and a slowly building sense of dread that you're being manipulated right into the darkness's hands and have to figure out what's actually going on before it's too late. My personal favorite part of the game is the contrast between light and dark, and it is awesome. After walking through these dark forests at night, you come across a brilliant light source that will actually save you while making what's further on in the dark impossible to tell. There's a sequence early on where the police are after Alan are being ripped apart by the darkness with red and blue lights flashing off every surface. I mean, when the game tries to look nice, it succeeds brilliantly. For every time the game does something right, though, it seems to do two things wrong, making sure every approach to fright is kept subdued. For instance, in that same police sequence, there's no threat of capture or narrow dodges to actually make you feel like you need to keep running. The very first enemy is actually kind of effective, attacking Alan's psyche as well as his person. Once you keep progressing through the game, however, the enemies become more familiar and predictable, a perfect silver bullet to the head of tension. What's more, they spout lines that start somewhat menacing, but quickly become downright laughable. The game is also divided up into six episodes, but after each, the player gets a song and a title card that carefully destroys any immersion the player may have felt. There's also a recap of the previous chapter at the beginning of the next. This is great for people who can only play the game two hours at a time, but playing that way doesn't help the sense of fright, and why would you need this if you're going to keep playing? It just becomes an added wall between the player and the game, which makes it a lot harder to get immersed. Oh, and that creepy text I mentioned earlier? It repeats. I nearly cried. It also doesn't tell you anything you didn't already know most of the time, and usually has pretty pointless messages, defeating the excitement and elation you get from finding it. Speaking of finding things, you'll have your hands full with collectibles. In the span of the game, you'll be tasked with finding coffee thermoses, manuscript pages, TVs, radios, secret ammo caches marked by some of that creepy text, and more. The manuscript pages add background and tell some of the story that you wouldn't be privy to otherwise. The problem is, for Alan being a writer, they aren't all that well written, and the background it does provide are for characters that don't matter. Another annoying fact is that there are over a hundred of them in an eight hour game! You don't even find them sequentially, making collecting them frustrating. Even if you don't want the collectibles, they're so prevalent that they're difficult to ignore. Finally, the final boss fight, which is debatably the only one in the game, was tragically pointless and easy. It may have worked cinematically, but gameplay wise, it was a total letdown. It's true, there's some amazing parts of this game, and there are great moments worth playing it for, and I do like it. There are a couple of neat variations on the gunfights, the first use of the flare gun, some of the scenery. But when something so difficult as a frightening atmosphere is attempted and not pulled off well, it feels like there are a thousand reasons why. Terror without cheap scares isn't easy, but it's been done before, and to beautiful effect. I love a psychological thriller and a good sense of tension as much as the next guy, but I just didn't get any of that from this game. Alan Wake gets an A for effort and ambition, but a flat D for execution. In the end, 3 out of 5 stars seems like an appropriate rating. Thanks for watching our video review of Alan Wake, and stay tuned for more coverage.